Yo, this is officially episode number one of The Bayou. This episode is Kelsey X Niles. I hope you guys do stick around, watch the whole interview, and after you'll be able to see me perform a little bit. So I am here today with an amazing community uh, influencer, uh, really dope um, inspiration to the scene, and a really amazing person, uh, Kelsey Kaufman. That's me. Everybody, you know what I'm saying? Show some love to her if you are watching the view on this. Uh, so before I really get to ask you any questions, I kind of want you to give everybody who's viewing and watching this right now uh, kind of a little backstory about you and your relationship with the scene. For sure. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be a part of this and excited about the whole New State project in general. I think it's really important. Um, a little backstory. I started playing drums when I was in middle school because a bunch of my friends were getting into punk and rock band shit. And so in sixth grade, um, I started playing the drums. And by seventh grade, I started my first band and we were in the talent show. Okay. And then from there, um, kind of started going to Shorewood and River West and Menominee Falls and going to these all ages shows that were popping up in community centers and basements and garages and backyards and whatever. So it was like the, uh, not to cut you off, I'm sorry, because no. I'm actually interested in that. No, no, no. So you said that the, um, you were doing like little basement uh, shows, little, you know, like talent shows and things. Was that really big back in like the time where you were like actually active? I mean, my sense of the world was pretty small. I mean, the, the internet was so different than it is today, where today it's like so easy to be connected internationally yeah. with all these different platforms. And it's like so commercialized in a way that's, both like really easy and accessible and also like kind of ugly because it's um, impersonal in certain ways. Mm -hmm. But so um, was it really big and popular? I don't necessarily think infinite as far as like, uh, there were like a lot more battle of the bands that I was aware of, but I'm sure that still happened. Okay. And Muskego and Fond du Lac and whatever. Uh, the Rave mm -hmm. used to have some like really um, kind of putsy pay to play battle of the bands, which at the time when I was, 12 years old thought was super cool and then later was just like ooh, what was i thinking I'm like yes <laughs> um but but yeah that's kind of how i first got in the mix and started to like learn and most importantly like meet people and that's what i was so excited about beyond just like creating and producing music it was mm. the excitement of meeting people across the city and then across the state and then across the country who kind of shared like a similar ethos and curiosity about the world and trying to figure out like how to make sense of it um, so yeah, when I was in high school, I started playing in bands that like toured way more and graduated from high school. And all I wanted to do was just travel and meet people. And, um, the scene kind of introduced me to more radical politics and different like alternative ideas, whether it be veganism, whether it be social and environmental justice, racial justice, like queer politics and like what that means and looks like. So in so many ways, music was so formative and foundational for me from like a social and personal and political level beyond just like the creative components to it. Yeah. Um, and I never really expected to, or desired frankly, to like own a venue that was never like the be all end all. But I started working at Cactus Club in my early 20s. And mm -hmm. through um, my experiences here, like things just kind of kept blossoming and there was like these events that like were nourishing and um, yeah. So last so year- kind of branded you in a sense. Yeah, to yeah, totally, inadvertently so. And I'm still maintained to this day. I think all ages shows, uh, renegade all ages shows in basements and at skate parks or whatever are forever going to be more fun than punk shows. Or yeah, punk shows, not punk well, shows. Well, not punk, but yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah. yeah, because it's just a different environment where it's like more, like intrinsically more collaborative and intrinsically more self-willed. But it's also important to have like really good sound in certain settings and like that's mm -hmm. not always possible in these other like sort of informal spaces. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah. This last February I bought Cactus Club, so you might, a lot of people know me through Cactus Club, whether it be organizing shows or playing shows or whatever. So that's kind right. of a long-winded version of my relationship to Milwaukee music at large. Oh, cool. I mean, you know, we definitely appreciate hearing, like, your backstory for a lot of people who are viewing again. Um, yeah, you know, 
she's definitely an amazing person and definitely a great person to speak to. Nice person to, I guess, you know, I don't want to say be around or I'll sound really creepy or anything, but uh, yeah, you're a great uh, person to be around. And yeah. I appreciate everything that you are doing. And uh, I appreciate the backstory because it kind of gets me to know you a little bit more as well. Mm -hmm. um, next question. Uh, so now that I know a little bit about you and a little bit about, uh, you know, what, you know, you're working hard and pushing right now as far as uh, the Cactus Club goes, uh, the pandemic, what is your standpoint on that right now? How are you feeling about what's going on COVID-19? COVID-19 is a scary time. It's a scary time to be a person in the world. It's a scary time Man. to be a business owner in the world. It's a scary time um, in a lot of different ways as far as specifically health relating uh, to the pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. My perspective is that it is our social responsibility to put everybody's health first. So even if you don't perceive yourself to be at risk, there are immunocompromised folks that you don't know about that might be in your immediate community or share a building with you or whatever. So mm -hmm. um, I'm definitely uh, lean way into be cautious, be mindful, be respectful, wear your mask. Yeah. Business as usual is not picking up anytime soon. Do I wish that we could throw shows next week in the back room? Man. For sure. <laughs> Absolutely. I miss it like crazy and I can't even really uh, capture it. Um, and do I think virtual shows are anything like real life shows? No, for sure not. If you're staring, exactly. at, if you're staring at your computer, you're on your phone and computer all day anyways. The reason we go to these events is like, it's like really um, hard to, to be capture social. It's mm -hmm. being like in proximity to people playing and it like doesn't translate. But it's also our best option right now. So we're working right. hard to put together a really exciting lineup for uh, the rest of the summer and the fall for weekly uh, live performances and, mm -hmm. events and film screenings and stuff. So that's kind of the future in terms of uh, what's going on with us in the pandemic. So those have been uh, like little key points of what you have been like trying to stay uh, involved with as far as this whole pandemic has been going. Like you're just trying to find ways to channel like the energy that could easily turn such a bad situation like this into such a depression, you know what I'm saying? So, oh, again, for sure. definitely Absolutely. appreciate it. A lot that. of people struggling really legitimately, like financially, emotionally. I mean, mm -hmm. the government is failing us extraordinarily. Like, yeah, it's very, like very. relative to everybody, and everyone has like their experiences with it. But, like, Cactus Club has not received federal or state money for this. Mm -hmm. um, which pales in comparison to single mothers that aren't getting any unemployment or didn't get the stimulus check because the system failed them. So I just I got my stimulus, so I know exactly that struggle. Like after what well, I've been filing unemployment since April, and I just got a stimulus like a week ago. So no, I can't lie. I'm not gonna say a week ago, like maybe two weeks ago. But sure. long story short, I get exactly what you and mean. Months like, and months, right? It's it's inexcusable. It's absolutely. <laughs> Um, criminal is crazy. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. like other big banks and stuff are getting bailed out and like, it's, it's twisted. Crazy. It's so, f it's, again, I gotta watch what I gotta say. I'm sorry. I almost <laughs> said, it. even I know it get cut off. It's just, man, like, dude, that's so freaking crazy. Like, like it, money automatically goes to businesses as opposed to like the hard workers that's like putting the labor of like the time of a day. Like, I don't know. I, get, I don't get it. Like, I feel like we gotta jump to too many, like, you know, um, yeah, trap doors. You know what I'm saying? Just for some money that we should be able as citizens to have, kind of just like or the basic resources. If it's not going to be mm -hmm. a check, then there should be real public housing. Then there should be real food subsidies. Then there should exactly. be exactly like medical uh, medical access for all and healthcare for all. And like, yeah, there's no gray area about like what like the ethics of this situation were, and it's mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah, it's just I don't know. Well, I guess that brings me to the next question as well. Uh, <laughs> well, you kind of, or well, as you see, we are kind of social distancing right now. You know, we're respecting yeah. each other's space. But uh, what are uh, things that you have been, like, uh, keeping tabs on or staying true to as far as the social distancing thing has been? Like, I know that, you know, you kind of briefly told me that, like, in your household that there's people uh, in your family who are actually practicing social distancing because you don't want to, like, you know, you guys fear for each other's lives and really care about each other. So what yeah. are some things? Yeah, I mean, uh, the reality is a lot of folks aren't seeing their families. I mean, for uh, for me, it's like I live lived with my roommate of 11 years who just moved to Tennessee for a graduate program. So he just moved a week okay. ago. 
but um, his partner Tasha lives with me, and then my partner Rory has been staying with me, but she like doesn't historically live with me. So uh, it's our high household is just kind of um, a little safe pot of sorts, and not until mm-hmm. like three weeks ago were we really interacting at all with anybody. Yeah. Um, but with Cactus doing these carryout hours now, there's a handful of Cactus folks who I'll share space with here, but everyone's wearing masks the entire time um, and washing hands really diligently and surfaces. Uh, the entire business model has shifted in drastically where we're only doing carry out um, outside. So basically we prop the front door open and people can come pick up drinks. Okay. No I, have to, I still have to stop by and support that. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. But no, no, no. I definitely had to come get a drink. I have to. Yeah, you got to come too. Yeah, we've got kombucha, CBD kombucha. for. Um, we got mocktails for those that don't drink. We've got a bunch of um, alcohol beverages if people are interested in that kind of thing. We've got coffee, iced tea. But, um, yeah, so no one else is allowed in the building. So as far as, like, my social distancing, like, inadvertently, a few people that work at Cactus are kind of um, sharing space. Uh, and kind of like get, getting into our little pot, if you will. But realistically, mm-hmm. it's just like me and two other people at this point. Damn. So this is really like a, I mean, of course, the pandemic is real life, like a serious situation. But damn, like just knowing like the interaction of what humans are used to on a daily basis, For being sure. really cut like shorter and really slim to like, you know, something they're not really, again, like this social distancing stuff is basically what you do when you go home anyway, after having a long day of kicking it. You know, you kind of, Go home, just like, uh, you know, I, I'm probably going to watch, kick my shoes off, watch TV, you know, yeah. just be to myself. But, like, imagine being stuck by yourself for so long and really being like, damn, what? like, I miss fucking life. You know, this is, this is a real crazy, like, time right now for people in general. And I really hope that everything does get back better. I hope the the levels of COVID go down at least, like, sometime soon. So Yeah, really right kinda, now, Wisconsin's just on the up and up. It's crazy. It's been ridiculous, yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I just hope the best for this situation. I just pray that everything does get better. But, um, yeah, now I'm done talking about the pandemic. Let's leave the pandemic alone. Okay. It kind of becomes depressing. Uh, now let's go back to the Cactus Club. You briefly spoke on it a little bit, and you kind of you know gave some key point pointers of, like, what your role is for the Cactus Club. So um, I was wondering, as far as the Cactus Club goes, uh, what is the role of Cactus Club in the music scene in Milwaukee, Wisconsin? Um, what is the rule? Well, we've a long-standing institution. The last owner, Eric, he bought it in 1996. Okay. And he started throwing shows uh, here, and he was fortunate in the way that this old – it was called Cactus Club starting in the 1950s. And okay. they like, wanted a country western bar, and they picked names out of a hat, and they're like, Cactus Club, that's it. And shortly thereafter, they what? got, like, a live music <laughs> permit, and they did, like – a couple shows every year or two, like rinky dinky back room. Like it was not a music venue and like what we conceive of it as, but they still went through like the process of getting this permit. So Eric came along in the nineties and wanted to host these like punk shows and they Mm. had this permit. So it was kind of like it was grandfathered in where he would have gone to the city and been like, I want to throw these shows. They'd probably been like, absolutely not. (laughs) <laughs> the car had been like kind of on the downward spin in terms of they were like weren't having the same business it used to be kind of a coast guard bar and so this like young dude came along and was like i can pack your spot with a bunch of people let me throw these shows and so that's kind of how it got going um in the like 1994 i think is when he first started doing it he bought it in 96 but so since then it's i mean been so it's been a yeah. really good like 20 plus years you yeah, know, really, like, really good. good. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of like foundational early 2000s, in, 2000s, like indie rock and stuff came through here. And then when I started running things about five years ago, uh, it was with great intention that I really wanted to broaden the spectrum of what they were doing. Eric had hosted hip hop shows, Eric had hosted like experimental uh, electronic stuff, but it was like very rock centered. Mm. Um, and from there, like five years ago, we're like, let's make this the place that anyone who's passionate about what they're doing in terms of like forward facing multimedia arts, let's have this be the spot that we welcome them with open arms and say, Mm. let's collaborate, let's do it. So that's kind of been the attitude is that regardless of your medium, regardless of kind of your style, if you're doing stuff um, that's striking, we're like eager and and accessible in terms of like um, what you 
like we're not outrageously charging for the space, but also accessible right. in terms of like wanting to make it for all ages and like intergenerational audiences and even like folks of different abilities. Like it's a priority for me to eventually have this wheelchair accessible. So there's like a lot of different things that are kind of always swirling, but as far yeah. as like what our place is, um, we're just like champions of folks wanting to do cool shit. And by no means are we like, we're the owners of the cool shit. But no, like, no, no, but you know, like the champion of the, the people, like the, you are what the people want, so it makes yeah, sense. Yeah, totally. We're just trying to uplift folks that are doing um, exciting projects, and whether that be on site or off site, um, mm. our role is to bring creative communities together from across the city, across the globe, um, and kind of help perpetuate that and keep it energized. And like, uh, as both like a space for respite when folks are like feeling down and out or a space, yeah. uh, a space for like acceleration and encouragement when like things are already off and running, you know? So that's kind well, of- Well, I want to personally say you guys have been doing a, an amazing job. Like I said, like, I, I think I told you briefly, or I don't know if I told you, I think it was probably uh, your friend. And I think it was, uh, I don't want to say it wrong. I'm sorry. So, but yeah, your friend. Wait, Max was helping out with the virtual show? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think. yeah, yeah. yeah. I was talking to her. Yeah, and I was telling her like, um, yeah, like the Cactus Club is a is a place for hope. Like, I really feel like every time I've been in there, there's oh, never wait, been no, like no. a. Strike it, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but it was Neely. You were talking about on the phone. Neely, name, Neely, the yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I was thinking. Okay. I was thinking. I didn't want to say her name wrong, but yeah, yeah no, 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 it's all good. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was talking to her and I was telling her like how beautiful the space is and how just welcoming it is. It's like, you, you can't come to the Cactus Club and feel like out of place. You might feel like off of stage, of course, because you're there and maybe you might be like, oh man, I'm super excited. Drilling is rushing. I want to be on stage. But I always feel like I'm at home because again, it's not like a, it's for one type of genre of music. It's not for one type of race. It's literally like for everyone. It's like, and again, it's all ages venue now. So again, that just makes it a plus. Like the fact that I was trying to get into the Cactus Club. So brief little backstory. I don't know if I really told you, but um, when I first really got into the community here, I think I was hearing about like um, shows going on and, at the Cactus. And uh, I was young, you know, and um, I put over my homies uh, who's in my music group, Fat Nerds, and we uh, were coming to see a show, I think either Webster X or I believe Cutest Sun or I think New Age Narcissism. It was one of those three names, but we were like, you know what? We're going to come try to, you know, this was like 2016, uh, 2016, 2017. But anyway, I was like, yeah, we're going to go and try to like get into this club. We get there and security's tight, like don't tell my own neck. And I'm just like, damn, like this would have been the first time I would have ever been to a bar like underage, you know? So, um, I guess after that, ever since then, I always had to drive and always had like the, uh, I believe uh, the word, the, the right word for it would be aspirations of wanting to really find my way into the Cactus Club and really like uh, experience the Cactus Club as a whole. And ever since, like I said, every time I'm there, it's just always love from the artists, from like the workers, from like just you, from like just the energy and the music that's being respected. And I really love the Cactus Club in that space. So you've done a one great ass job. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. That's definitely the goal, and it's very, very collaborative. There's a lot of really incredible folks here that are very committed to the overarching vision mm -hmm. and big picture of just, like, uh, uplifting one another's practices and pursuits. Now that uh, you say that as well, and, you know, we kind of briefly spoke about just music and performers being there, uh, how is there ways for up-and-coming creatives or artists to basically um, – get a chance to perform at the Cactus Club. If, you know, you kind of briefly give us a rundown on that. Yeah, totally. So in normal real life, um, I try and be as available as possible, but I always tell people, come in. If you, and now it's like more, if you're 15, 16, it was harder before, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, stop it. It shows that you care. Put like, put a face to the name of, and like, first to folks that don't have like cards and stuff, I'm not saying that that's uh, imperative. But I do think it's helpful to like have a conversation. I'm very like old school in that way where I'd rather jump on a phone call and hear your voice and talk to you and like mm -hmm. um, riff about ideas. Um, but at the same time too, cold emails also work. And sometimes people will spell out really incredible ideas. That I was just, I had no idea who you were and whoa, and you're connected to so-and-so and that's how that works. And like the whole web is like, not in like the world wide web, but like the web of people that know each other in this like 
scene is really amazing and how far it extends or whatever. So for young artists, um, my biggest recommendation is just like show up. That's like the biggest, most game changing thing. And it sounds really simple, Man. And most stupid and reductive, but like show up and say what's up. And like, even if you're shy, you don't, it doesn't have to be some like elaborate, um, brilliant new idea just like saying what's up can be like very uh impactful and exciting and um, mm -hmm. help yeah push things a step further but as far as like what um what growth and what opportunities lie during like pandemic zone uh one thing that i've been talking to a few people about is this is a really beautiful time for folks that have the energy and are interested in trying to like produce right now Mm. To experiment and again reach out to people that you don't think are interested or maybe think are like one step beyond or wouldn't have the time of day because no one has anything better to do right now exactly. i'm like sitting exactly. on their couch thinking like what the hell is next what <laughs> do? um and so in terms of like collaborations depending on what kind of music you make depending on what kind of technology you have i mean even if you have a phone right now depending on your kind of phone, but like you can mm -hmm. make simple lo-fi recordings. You can like go back and forth and make kind of weave together um, these tracks and like make yeah. interesting music. And it might not be your be all end all of what you were initially interested in, but nevertheless can be gratifying and nevertheless can kind of, again, like open up doors. But even if it's not even just for the sake of like musical collaboration, but even in terms of like mentorship shit or like, I mean, mm -hmm. asking at this point, like promoters, asking other MCs, asking other like bands and like booking agents and whatever, whatever, uh, about their process or about like the formulas or order of operations of doing things. I think um, that can be really exciting and helpful. Another thing too uh, that Cactus Very. has done this spring was organize this collaborative music video project where artists submitted their songs into like this court sort of database and then filmmakers or non-filmmakers, but like, you and I with our phones can make a, f a music video, not, but it wouldn't be like necessarily what we think of traditionally as a music video, but why not? Like, let's make right. stuff. And so that was kind of like the premise of the project. So filmmakers and non-filmmakers claim these songs. If people are still interested in doing it, it says the deadline's passed, but what are deadlines in COVID era, 2020, who knows? Um, but so uh, we just want to bring different people together and people from different mediums and have conversations about aesthetics and taste and like vision and intention about like what is your song about what are you trying to convey what moves you and like i think those are the conversations that tie us all together in like a really beautiful way so um for folks that have the energy but but also it's okay if you don't have the energy right now like that's mm -hmm. another thing that's like so much focus on like being productive and social media and all this like performative crap but it might also be a really important time to just like sit back and go to the lake and write your thoughts or just drink water and think about like Definitely. how you get through the day. And that's also totally okay and relevant and valid. So I think that's like part of the whole conversation. People sometimes get so focused on this idea of like, this is the next step, but there's no linear direction for it, you know? Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, yeah, that, that definitely I feel like is going to help a few people in, uh, that are either viewing this or that is actually watching this and looking for uh, what's next. I think that everything you said was completely valid. It's just all about right now capitalizing on information and really like utilizing this time to really grow. I think um, before this pandemic, there was a lot of fast movement going on. I don't know if you know, but I feel like life was at a rapid speed where it seemed like any everyone was becoming famous. You know, it seemed like uh, there was just a, a lot of like uh, things going on, like the NBA season was just really picking up really fast. The Bucks almost got a championship, you know, and, yeah. you know, just, just stuff like where it just, it just seems like it was, life was just moving very, very fast. We just lost Kobe Bryant, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was a lot of stuff going on, and I don't know, I feel like I've been telling people this, like, the last 24, 48, because I've been kind of coming to a conclusion about it. I feel like um, life kind of on purposely slowed down. Um, you know how, like, for instance, you would probably have like this daily routine, like probably like a going to school, getting up, getting ready for school or going to, getting, going to work, getting ready, going to this, this job that you like, you know, that you really, you happy with at first, but then sometime down the line, you kind of grow like, okay, I want, you know, you kind of grow not weary, but like you get uh, 
not interested in the job no more. You kind of want something else, but you know that you have to stick to this same job or routine just until the next like opportunity comes at hand. I feel like that's what this is. I feel like this coronavirus thing is like a, a long phase of just like uh, self awareness and just like for it's just it's just time for everybody to kind of really utilize this for like personal gain. And I just think that people who are using it for personal gain really use it mentally in the right way nobody's going to be able to mess with you when you come out of this. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, I mean, think. that's the big reset button. Like, you don't mm -hmm. like your job, you don't like the course of your life. Like, what does that mean or look like? I, and that's, not, like, coming, sounds like it's coming from a place of, like, immense privilege, and I don't mean it in that way, but it's just, No, like, right, though. I feel that. But at, yeah, I mean, industries at large have kind of come to a screeching halt, and mm -hmm. who knows what the future of schooling and education at the university or even the public, like, um... I, elementary grade school high school level will look like this fall and so mm -hmm. I think um, amidst sort of uh, the scary realities there's also a lot of space of re-envisioning what we want to see and what we yeah. want to see in that like in so many different parts of our lives mm -hmm. yeah no I, I, I completely agree with that I feel uh, you basically are just saying everything that I really feel like needs to be said I'm I really hope whoever is watching this show by the way if you are just joining I am here with Kelsey Kaufman and we are uh, you know just kind of having a really great time conversating speaking about things that uh, as a creative as a person as a um, you know a artist you would want to really be able to tune in and listen to so I hope you guys are enjoying this interview so far um, I got a few more questions for you. I want to do a quick little icebreaker. And then after that, uh, I'll kind of just let you give your, your shout outs, whatever last comments and concerns and things. Um, my next question will be, uh, the trans community, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, I want to know how you feel about the things that are going on with a lot of these protests. Uh, where do you stand on the movement? And, um, Basically, the things that you've been doing to help support with that community, the trans, you know, the LGBTQ community, right? Yeah, Am so I we're right? talking about simultaneously Black Lives Matter movement as well as LGBTQ. Mm -hmm. or is that what you're saying? Right? Cause you're well, yeah, about yeah. Because, uh, okay, yeah, let me kind of rephrase that better because, again, this could probably be chopped up. So, um, yeah, so what is your views and standpoints on the Black Lives Matter movement? What are you doing as far as uh, your actions to kind of like help support the Black Lives Matter uh, community? And also for the LGBTQ community, uh, where's your step point on that? And what are your actions and things that you are doing to kind of like uh, support and stand behind uh, that community full commitment? Yeah, for sure. No, I appreciate you asking both of those questions. Mm -hmm. As far as both movement, I guess let's go one at a time. As far as okay. the Black Lives Matter movement, I've been invested in racial justice for um, a very long time. Um, in early 2010s, I was in the streets for Derek Williams when Dontre mm -hmm. Hamilton's death happened or uh, murder happened in Milwaukee. Um, that, uh, yeah, ravaged me. And um, yeah. we did a lot of organizing uh, around that. And so, with most recently the last like month and a half or so uh, of protests, I've been in the streets handing out water, handing out popsicles, chanting, cheering along, um, trying to use Cactus Club as a platform to disseminate information and raise money and raise awareness. Um, yeah. Be very clear in our messaging that there's like no gray area and that reparations are needed and there's like lots of different ways that that can um, be accomplished and look like. Uh, but as, on an individual level, I always have more work that uh, I need to be doing and learning and stuff like that. But um, try and be very conscientious uh, about trying to uplift those around me and look out. Um, yeah. The black community definitely needs that too, yeah. by the way. But. Um, but so that's kind of my zone with it. Cactus Club uh, kind of impulsively did this Black Lives Matter uh, sign fundraiser. Where I had a few friends reach out to me like, hey, Kelsey, where can I buy Black Lives Matter signs? And I was like, I don't know, mm -hmm. let me Google that for you. And like thinking it would be like everywhere. Like, of course, like Beans and Bars right. would have signs and like the Black Educators Caucus would have signs. And called around to a bunch of places and was kind of like baffled that, oh, shit, there's not somebody right now in Milwaukee that I could 
find, but I'm sure there were, but not someone that uh, I was easily able to find. So we partnered up with this local uh, screen printer and printed out initially, I think it was 200 signs. And then we did like another 300 mm. or maybe it was initially a hundred and there's going to be like another 300 made, but we raised $8,000 in like 10 days. And it kind of blew my mind. Damn. Like, man. But then even with that, and there's a lot of beautiful parts to it, but even mm. with that, I had like experiences with non-black folks being like entitled and rude and like, about picking up these signs where I was just like, oh my fucking God, is it, or do I regret making these because people are gonna use these signs and pat themselves on the back and think, oh, I did it. I'm not, I'm not racist now. Right. And so it was like really an interesting um, sort of anecdote of self interrogation of like, what is my, like how, how can we use this as uh, a means for raising money for the Milwaukee Freedom Fund and for black trans protesters? Mm -hmm. um, but simultaneously kind of reinforce like where we're at. And like, then we talked about, should we make one side say black lives matter? The other side say defund the police, because to me, they're inextricably linked. But for a lot of liberals, they're like, I don't know, defund the police, abolition. And abolition obviously identifies as an abolitionist. Abolition doesn't mean that we snap our fingers and the entire police state disappears. It exactly. means devising solutions that aren't carceral, where we look at like, what are the resources our communities need and how do we get those and how can we make this transition as just as possible? And that requires a lot of time and a lot of energy because people are messy and we have had hundreds of years of exploitation and just like brutal systemic racism. So of course there are systemic issues that will be very, very complicated to like uproot. So, um, it's definitely time for justice. It's, it's a lot. It's time for like justice, really. Like you know. Yeah, totally. And like, yeah, the military state, the police state, the prison, uh, industrial complex, all like gotta go. Mm -hmm. But I'm like on some like ramp with it. But back to adjusting your question. No, you good. You good. I get I stand it. with the movement. I'm here for a hundred percent. As far as um, trans liberation and trans rights, I'm here for that a thousand percent. I identify as queer. I identify as gender queer. It's not mm -hmm. something because I have. Um, a lot of like femme passing privilege that I'm like very outspoken about because I identify as like very fluid. Um, but nevertheless, I'm absolutely here to honor and uplift folks and um, affirm gender expressions of whatever folks uh, desire. Yeah. So, um, I mean, Cactus has been a queer space for as long as I've been running it. There's a queer majority staff, but there's also a lot of straight folks that work here. And it's like definitely will always be that way. Um, They're all very respectful, by the way. You have really hard workers. I appreciate them they, every time I, I'm there. Yeah, so. Totally. And yeah, I mean, They're I can't, respectful, give, so. can't give them enough like cheers and like appreciation for the way that they operate in the world and try and like very collaboratively do better. And, and but at the same time are vulnerable and like willing to learn and like me, myself, for sure, um, have a lot of work to continually do and like, that's one thing that's been interesting too in the last month is people have been like newly politicized the idea of like being an ally versus like allyship behaviors. And it's like, you mm -hmm. never are at like this destination. Like I made it, I'm here. It's like exactly. you know, every day is like a daily recommitment to like speaking up and standing out and like doing the right thing or trying to figure out what that means or looks like. So if it's inevitable, there's going to yeah. definitely be a lot more work being put into just like words. So you definitely are like, saying like again you're around the right people the right energy like i really like that a lot thank you i appreciate it and yeah likewise and i appreciate you making time and making space um to uplift all these things yeah um yeah well yeah i, I appreciate your standpoint and views on the black lives matter and the uh lgbq community um protests again like i, I know that you was going to have a lot of stuff to say as far as like how you really felt about it because i know we briefly spoke on it uh you know a few weeks back and i knew that you know it was just something that needed to be said again i know it's not going to just be one certain amount of fan base or a certain group of people watching this this is for you who are watching this right now again uh my name is niall that's kelsey kaufman and again we just want to sit here and kind of give you guys a really good uh um interview of just kind of a you know, a little bit more insight of what's going on in the scene. Just, again, she's an amazing creative, you know, and I just want everybody to know a lot more about her and what she has to offer. Yeah. So, uh, uh, one last question before we get into this icebreaker, though. 
uh, it's about cactus. It's um, what are your goals for the the community and the creators in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, or you know, just in general, but mainly Milwaukee, Wisconsin, right now, uh, with the Cactus Club for the next three to five years. Woo, honey, um, that's a great question. <laughs> it's just really hard to imagine right now because everything feels like very day by day. But um, I can safely say my goal is and will remain. Uh, being a reliable space for programming of consequence and accessible to those that want to um, experiment with it. And so whether yeah. you're a filmmaker, whether you're an MC, whether you're a songwriter, play in bands, um, and do dance, like, interpretive, experimental um, performance, uh, and are looking for a space and haven't found something that feels fitting, don't mm -hmm. hesitate to reach out. And even if it's, again, not held on site, I'm happy to riff with folks about different ideas and what spaces may or may not feel good or look good. Um, but I guess for sure my goal is to be a resource for those that awesome. are interested in curating and organizing um, and for it to feel accessible. Because, like, the professionalization of it is not at all, it's, like, antithetical to what I'm interested in. Um, mm. To me, relationships are the building blocks of life. That's, like the be all, the end all, my grandfather taught me that. And so, um, yeah, we're in it together. So whether, I mean, as far as like goals in general, I would more like concrete goals uh, for the space. I would love to be ADA compliant, uh, which means like uh, American Disabilities Act compliant so that folks with wheelchairs can come here and feel um, that they- That's gonna be so can, next level. Yeah, with <laughs> and, and there's like a shitty ramp that's in the back of the building, but I mean, Maybe this is an important share. Uh, most cities don't require ADA compliance. You can be like grandfathered in. So because this building's old as hell, they never were like, okay, we realize that this isn't okay because everyone should feel welcome to come into spaces and everyone, there shouldn't be like, what is like structural violence against people with different mobility issues? Yeah. And so like, there should be grant programs like, oh, you're invested in this? Like, you don't have money, but you're a new business, but realize the importance of this? Like, here, let's, Let's collaborate. Exactly. Uh, so that's for sure a goal. Another goal is increasing our capacity because right now it's tethered to the number of women's restrooms. It's like this re international plumbing code. It's like very antiquated ideas of um, space and sanitation. So because we only have um, what that constitutes one women's bathroom, even though both of our bathrooms are non-gendered, non all gender, whatever. Um, so okay. adding a couple bathrooms. I think which one you're talking about too. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a goal of mine. Um, I don't know how, when, where, because uh, it's obviously a huge, huge capital project, but mm -hmm. that's for sure a goal. Um, I would love to get solar panels on the building. That would that's that'd be clean. Space. That'd be yeah. clean, man. Which uh, for solar panels, you're supposed to have like a south facing roof, which we do. Mm -hmm. um, oh, okay. So we're like for sure eligible, but again, it's like just a lot of money that. I don't have, but the, I mean, but what time, it, it, but what time, you know, it's doing yeah, it's projects good, it's good and to think yeah. about it, but, um, for sure, most importantly is just being a reliable space, uh, where folks continue to feel welcome and we continue to do what we love to do. All right. Definitely yeah. appreciate hearing that. Woo! All right. Shout out to this <laughs> interview, man. This was so fucking fire. You've been receiving. Oh, man, I'm cussing this stuff. I know it's going to all be cut out. But anyway, yo, <laughs> shout out to this interview, man. You know, we're having a really great time. Thank you so much, Kelsey. Uh, yeah. Now it's time to get into these icebreakers to kind of shake off the little vibes of, you know, just kind of being super serious and really just going, you know, hard on just, like, really speaking the truth because, again, everybody needs to hear it. So... I hope you're ready for this. I'm, I don't know if I'm ready. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I think you got this. Uh, so my first icebreaker will be, so you're stranded in the middle of nowhere on a boat, right? Okay. On a boat. I'm with a boat. You have two celebrities that you have to choose between either saving or letting drown. Those two celebrities are Kanye West, Donald Trump. Who are you letting sink? Who are you saving? Oh, I'm saving <laughs> Trump is done. I mean, I wish. Yeah. at least make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right? 
No, that's definitely perfect. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I probably would save Kanye West as well. I don't think that Donald Trump needs any goddamn saving that there. The way he, yeah, nah, his character's trash. Yeah, I don't, he's, he's canceled. If that's even a thing. Uh, cancel yeah. culture. I don't even want to speak on that either. That didn't really take us somewhere else. But yeah, he's canceled. <laughs> uh, all right, my second question then. This one is more so of a personal, not really a game. Or, you know, yeah, it's more so of a personal preference. What is a song or a project that you have had on repeat nonstop as of late? So, like, as of late, it'd be, like, the last, like, maybe three three years until, like, yeah. now type of thing. Oh, shit. Okay, let, no, let's, let's make it even closer. Because repeat for three years, I, I don't have a attention span like that. Okay. I, um, like, for the last month and a half or so, maybe. No, probably a few months now. Okay, so put like this: the last six so, months. That's, that's okay. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So since April, <laughs> uh, I've been blasting Sudan archives. Uh, she's like she classically means. trained and absolutely brilliant. And like when when quarantine first kicked off, I was like, maybe we can still do Beat Street in October, which is like our block party. Um, that's outdoors. Actually, our block parties are probably outdoors. That was a weird thing. Mm. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so in October, historically, the last few years, we've had, like, the street party, and Oshun played one year. Um, Abby Jean headlined one year. Sarah Shook and the Disarmers headlined one Abby year. Jean is amazing, by the way. Yeah. And I think Milo headlined one year, but maybe that was – they just played the same year as somebody else. I can't remember exactly. I've never <laughs> – Seeing Milo perform, let alone, I don't think I've ever heard Milo's music, but I would love to check out some music of Milo. So if you okay, can, please well, send me a link. This is over. I'm, yeah, I'm like, he's <laughs> on my rap Sierra. I hope I didn't mispronounce his name. Um, yeah. But yeah, he's, he's brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, his newest uh, record is phenomenal. I cannot wait for you to listen to it and then for you to mm -hmm. us talk about it. But um, that aside, so in April, when I still had these delusions of maybe we'd host a street party in October, mm -hmm. I reached out to uh, the booking agent for Sudan Archives, and I was like, what can we do to make this happen? And they were like, I mean, it's possible, but who knows what the conditions will be, da-da-da. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, she has a song, uh, Confessions, and it's just like, it's so catchy. So um, Her name is Sudan Archives? Mm -hmm. Sudan Archives oh. is the name of like, uh, the project. I'm definitely, oh, okay, yeah, I'm going to definitely, so it's like a self-title. Uh, to be honest, I'm really bad at that stuff. I can't remember if there's a record name for it. Hold on, I'm going to check really quick. Okay, yeah, because I was going to say, either way it go, I'll still check it out. I just want to know, like, well, you know what? Just send me a link to uh, Milo and her stuff. Or oh, yeah, House. I already know. Okay, so it came out last year, um, but the name of the record's Athena, but Sudan Archives is the name of the artist. Okay, yeah, send me send me links of Sudan Archive. I don't know if yeah. I just kind of, yeah, definitely. Um, wait, what about, last... let, me, wait, let me flip the script. What about okay. you, the last three months, last four months? If I could be completely honest, if since we're generalizing it like that, if I could be completely honest, I've really just been listening to a lot of upbeat energy. So, Little Uzi Vert's album, and uh, I've, been, I've been bumping G Herbo's album as well. I'm really a big fan of, like, uh, G Herbo and Little Uzi Vert and like just energy like I really like uh, you know a music with a purpose again I think a lot of people kind of misinterpret what they do because uh, all music doesn't have to be lyrical all music doesn't have to have such a deeper meaning or purpose but I definitely feel that we do need to have those sound waves that allow us to pick up on a really like low self esteem day or we need to be able to you know help carry energy that others weren't able to access because they don't really know where to find that energy. You know, I feel like we are the vessels of, um, what's the word? I think, I think we are the vessels of like what can actually, you know, help be the change in this world, if that makes sense. And I think that it starts literally day by day with you, like however you go about it. Again, I know for a fact that, uh, you know, you could, and I, and I know this is kind of a little going off of like, you know, my favorite music or whatever, but just speaking on like that, just the whole energy and why I really listen to those projects and the songs that those two artists put out a lot recently is because again, I just feel like really like, you know, everybody's been going through this like really depressed, like energy state. And I really do really, really appreciate what these two artists and I'm pretty sure many more like Gunna and them are doing to keep, you know, music with like really heavy 808 uh, amazing patterns and just really like uh, just being themselves and being able to have fun doing it. Like I'm, 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 I really appreciate yeah. that. Revolution's yeah. dancing. It's true. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so, yeah, that's just what I've been listening to lately, having a really nice time. Uh, I'm just trying to stay focused. Pause for a second. So we do, uh, at Cactus, a Spotify monthly playlist for uh, friends and family of Cactus Club can contribute. Uh, so uh, for August, would you be willing to put together, like, a 75-minute playlist for Spotify? And, uh, not- <laughs> I mean, I okay, so to be honest, I definitely be down to because um, I'm actually helping also curate uh, a state sessions uh, playlist, but with uh, okay. Wisconsin artists. Yeah, so totally. I, I think it'd be definitely uh, a blessing for me if you would be down for me too. I'm uh, yeah, we can double down and recirculate it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because uh, like I was just you know uh, kind of just like briefly saying like uh, I don't know if you do know, but the state sessions, which is like uh, all ages hub, that's right up under the new state. Mm-hmm. Um, Again, we're kind of trying to, as you see, like the you know from the logo and the you know the state session slip thing in the background. But uh, yeah, we kind of again want to be for the community and kind of be for like a lot of artists and being that opportunity for people who don't really know where to reach out to, people who don't really know where to go to for uh, broadcasting their talents and their art. So uh, yeah, I think um, in these next couple of like next two weeks, I'll be I'm gonna be pretty much like available to really just be sitting down and really curating like music and putting them on playlists. So I def- that's an honor, honestly. Awesome. I appreciate you. Likewise. Uh, and uh, my last question, um, again, that's, that's super good that we were able to kind of like take a break from everything we're talking about. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> what is a, a favorite place in the world? What is your favorite place in the world and why? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, and feels really special in a time too, where you can't really, um, travel too far. What is mm-hmm. my favorite place in the world? <laughs> yeah, it's, not, like, it's not be for lack of ideas. It's like the, I know it's guard, right? like the favorite. I mean, like, uh, one of the first that jumps out is at my grandmother's house, she lives right close to Lake Huron. And so there's like, mm. a port, uh, not even a porch swing, but at the park, there's like a swinging bench. So I'm like, that's one of my favorite places in the world. Like when I was a kid, there's like a seesaw that I used to like fall off of. And Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah I, used so, to, I used to do seesaw when I was younger, not to cut you off. It's, yeah. you know, definitely uh, an excitement. <laughs> yeah, like some weird nostalgic thing. So my, I guess my grandma's house, I've been thinking a lot about my grandma. So uh, that for sure would be one of my favorite places in the world. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, and like, I lived in Cairo, Egypt for a while, and so that ha- definitely has like a place in my heart in like a deep way. So I think about like this balcony I used to hang out on. Like that's mm-hmm. one of my favorite places, and like there's spots in New Orleans and in New York. But like, yeah, I've never I mean, been to New York or New Orleans, and I want to go so bad. Like, I love, think I would. I, would I mean, really, like, yeah, there's I. New Orleans is like no other place in the world, and that um it feels like a different country where there's like this conversational component to it that just doesn't exist really. And other places Mm -hmm. in the United States, I mean, it's such a convergence of so many overlapping histories and like the music is, yeah, it sounds cheesy as fuck. Like when I'm saying, I'm like, oh, don't be that guy saying that New Orleans. But really, no, 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 no. You, you speaking your facts. You speaking your reality. Again, I asked you because I'm interested. No, totally. Uh, No, totally. For sure. Um, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll stick with that, or I'll get cheesy on and be like, with those I love, any place in the world, with those I love, that's that's where I want to be. Yeah, that's fire. I can't, I, like I said, I can't wait to, like, um, I actually have plans on wanting to go to New York very soon. I don't want to speak on them too much to kind of, like, you know, feel like I'll be throwing it off, but at the same time, power is within the tongue. Manifestation is a real thing. So mm-hmm. I do want to be positive. I do want to write it down in physical form. I do want this to really become a thing that, uh, like an alchemy in a sense, you know what I'm saying? I want to kind of be able to really make this idea and this, this thing come to life where mm-hmm. I will be in New York one day. Uh, I even said that about Chicago. And my first time being in Chicago was 2018. Um, me and my girl, we were, uh, her family stayed out there. It was the first time I ever been out there. And ever since I first went out there, uh, you know, I've been out there ever since, you know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's just all about manifestation and, yeah, I really hope to see New York really soon. So, you uh, appreciate sure. that. And once, yeah, once all this safety, virus, medical, whatever passes, um, I have no doubt that you will be on the road touring and figuring it out and making it happen. Yeah, uh, yeah, I definitely hope so, honestly. Um, I guess with this being like near the end of the interview, uh, 
I just want to ask one, uh, one or two last two, or well, one to two more questions left. So then you kind of, okay. you know, um, are there any last minute comments, uh, concerns or topics you would like to kind of like, uh, make known or like, you know, kind of touch on any shout outs and stuff or like encouraging words that you want to kind of like briefly speak on, or at least like, you know, have kind of like to the viewers. I'm going to do, I guess, a quick shout out to next week. We're going to be launching a Patreon for Cactus Club. So right now we've been doing this carry out hours where you can come order a growler, order a batch cocktail, take it to go. Um, we've been on the merch game super, super heavy with long sleeves and candles and mustards and crew necks and hats and blah, blah, mm. blah. Um, and we've been super blessed that that's been helping to keep us afloat. But that on its own, right? Like we weren't, we never meant to be a bodega. We want to be like a space mm. for creative arts. So in order for that to be possible, um, we're launching this Patreon. So subscribers for $5 a month can get access to the whole virtual archives. You, mm -hmm. uh, and then we're going to start doing two, three, four times a week like we used to do. We used to do five, six, seven times a week programming. But film screenings, lectures, interviews, live performances, DJ sets, and just creating this content that like we actually believe in. Like the whole reason we're doing this isn't to sell drinks. None of us really, I mean, I personally don't care about beer. I don't care about all the different right. stuff and flavors, but it's like a part that helps keep us afloat. So we have to like have those offerings, but um, the arts is definitely like our reason for existing. So with that, all of the events will still be free live mm -hmm. uh, and you can contribute $5 to the artist or whatever it may be, 100% of donations will go directly to the artist. Um, but if, for instance, you miss the show and you want to like, check it out, if you're a Patreon subscriber, then you can go in and forever like, be able to be like, oh, and that one person said, or that one film, let me show my grandma. I want to show my grandma this film. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of um, our new way of trying to uh, make a framework so that we continue to, continue to program in a way that's like possible. Because it's been awesome that there's been so many people that have been like willing to help coordinate for free and do all these things. But at the end of the day, there are people who work here and like, they have to have like some sort of income. And I'm not talking about me in this context, um, but no, folks exactly that are, like, really critical to organizing. So the Patreon is going to be um, coming out next week. So I want to shout out to that. And uh, with that, there'll be a whole uh, flurry of announcements for films, DJs, live performances for July and August. So that's like our first uh, sort of, um, season of it is July and August and then we'll start September, October, November programming will be like kind of the second swing of it. Okay. Um, so folks that are interested in getting involved, whether even if somebody was like, I want to do a fashion show and I want to have an audience for it and Fair. how the heck do I do this? And I got a videographer who's a friend and like, what does that look like? Give me a shot. We can maybe figure it out. Maybe we can help like amplify it. Not in this way that like, let me give you an opportunity because that's not the mood. But at mm -hmm. the same time, let's, hang out, let's collaborate, let's, um, so, yeah, reach out, I guess that's my parting word, is, like, don't hesitate to reach out, don't hesitate to, like, dream bigger, think more, try harder, whatever, I, hold up one second. All right. Rachel just came in. Yo! How are you? I'm good. How about you? Good. I'm good. What's up? It's lit. <laughs> well, uh, I, I guess last um, last thing I would like to ask is, uh, you know, just let everybody know who's watching, who's viewing this, where they can find you, if they have any questions about collaborations, opportunities, yeah, or any concerns. Yeah. Totally, for sure. So, um, and you can maybe put this in, like, the bottom or something if you have, like, yeah. a written thing. But email me at cactusclubshows at gmail.com mm -hmm. um, or DM us on Instagram. We're on Instagram all the damn time. Um, <laughs> but those are the best, easiest ways um, that I usually like communicating. But also, if you know Niall, uh, he can give you my number. <laughs> I could definitely give you the number. If she says it's okay, I'll give you the line. So don't be pressing me if, you know what I'm saying, she don't think it's all right to be giving me your line. But yeah, man, we thank you so much for being a part of this first episode. This is my first episode ever, first time ever doing this. So this is definitely big. Shout out to the state sessions for allowing me to be able to give you this amazing interview and have viewers watch what we are talking about because I know it's going to be very beneficial. So uh, yeah.
yeah, thank you so much. Yo, it's your host, Niall, and I just want to say shout out to everybody and all the music lovers at home paying attention to this. Uh, you have now entered the bayou, and without further ado, we're about to give you a great show. Your fire is burning, your desire is be honest I'm feeling like it's my time, on my bullshit Now my lifestyle can pay homage We're just trying to innovate no way We're just trying to innovate no way We're just trying to innovate no way But it sound like on my foes With a thought that found more I made way through the shadows on the way to the top Better rapper when niggas say they don't take again out of saddle I can feel your fire burning We visualize my entire purpose Some niggas riding when the tires turn Flow from the side to the highest vermin Going for the kill, nigga, this is not a deal, you know that I gotta keep that hunger Fucking up the game, I need a plan B One of my lyrics, so I gave it to Vinci You think about it, they can never understand how vivid though it is I had a world in my hands, so I just a move like a chemist for the soul I repent this so I'm old, killing your ego If your fire is burning, your desire to be honest I'm feeling like it's my time, but my bullshit Now my lifestyle can pay homage We're just trying to eat no way, we're just trying to eat no way, we're just trying to eat no way, we're just trying to Closer, we might need to get closer Bro, keep calling my phone. Ain't been the same, my nigga just died. I got a dog to the dog who need a surprise. Potent as fuck, if you ask me. You always told me to stick to rapping. Imagine, your lifestyle being holographic. Get to any rapper who be back in their passion. Loop the game, report the game, abuse the fame. Me and West, nigga, we gon' make a way. Been the son of a gun, you niggas just raise the face. I just like to tuck my shit. Two on the map, we gon' walk my shit. I just need y'all energy, empathy, and a beat. Your fire is burning, your desire to be honest. I'm feeling like it's my time, on my pussy. That song was titled Forest of Giant. It's going to be on my EP that I'm releasing in August titled Forest of Giant. So if you guys don't have, you know, you have enough chance, you know, enough time, I mean, just go ahead and check that out. It's streaming everywhere. Go, 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 I trip. I trip when I trip, I trip when I trip, I trip when I trip, I trip when I go, 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 go. I trip, I trip when I trip, I trip when I trip, I trip when I. We're working on a better self. Reality takes up wealth. The getaway been Chicago. We didn't create. They live in the art in my pimpership. Never let up reciting the businesses. We so lost. They want the 20 pro. Bring no mobs. Cause after all, that doesn't depend on material. Acting side is not. I know they feel you. Time to do shit my way. Not to feel it when there's too many people in the room. Hold away. I didn't need my space. My shorty text you said I'm on the way. That was like two, three hours ago. So this fuck up. I get it fast. I don't want to leave. But I still get up in. Go, 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 go. I trip, I trip when 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 I go, 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 go. I trip, I trip when I trip, I trip when I trip, I trip when I. What's the cost paid for? All the negatives can get ignored. If you work your hard, you get endorsed, and that's facts. They they be down since I'm from my sound, feelings are whole. Been taking my time, I see the signs, speak to my soul I've been a bug, time my area go Gotta stay down for the come up, I know change is coming We just gotta stay focused, watch my eyes on the sun up Reaching for the comments, yeah, the drinks are hopeless Reduce the power, take control, watch the self-destruct We make them fall, really this is time to mean the most Even with my back against the wall, still I get my own way Go, 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 go I trip, I trip when I trip, I trip when I trip I trip when I trip, I trip when I Go, 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 go Go, go, go. I trip, I trip when I trip. I trip when I trip. I trip when I trip. I trip when I go. Thank y'all so much for watching the Bayou. You guys have now officially entered the Bayou. Y'all be safe. All the music lovers at home, go ahead and drink a lot of water. Be safe. Anyway, you know.